Mina, Konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here, coming at you with 1 Chronicles 18, starting at verse 1. After this, it came to pass that David attacked the Philistines, subdued them, and took Gath and its towns from the hand of the Philistines. Then he defeated Moab, and the Moabites became David's servants and brought tribute. And David defeated Hadadezer, king of Zobah, as far as Hamath, as he went to establish his power by the river Euphrates. Jump down to verse 5. When the Syrians of Damascus came to help Hadadezer, king of Zobah, David killed 22,000 of the Syrians. Jump down to verse 9. Now when Toh, king of Hamath, heard that David had defeated all the army of Hadadezer, king of Zobah, he sent Hadoram his son to king David to greet him and bless him, because he had fought against Hadadezer and defeated him, for Hadadezer had been at war with Toh. And Hadoram brought with him all kinds of articles of gold, silver, and bronze. And then hop down finally to verse 12. Moreover, Abishai, the son of Zariah, killed 18,000 Edomites in the Valley of Salt. He also put garrisons in Edom, and all the Edomites became David's servants. And the Lord preserved David wherever he went. I've kind of talked about this before, and I'm probably going to talk about it several other times. We need to remember, as Christians, we have the victory in Christ. Now, most of the time, we're not out physically fighting anybody. We're not physically at war. Um, I've said this before, and I'll say this again repeatedly. A lot of the fighting is no longer in the physical like it was in the Old Testament. Nowadays, it's more in the spiritual in the New Testament. We're not fighting other people groups. We're not fighting a bunch of non-believers. What we're fighting is a non-believing mentality, a non-believing ideology, and definitely the spirit of non-belief. And many other spirits, like the spirit of greed, the spirit of lust, the spirit of pride, the spirit of selfishness, etc., etc., etc. And we need to remember that through the Lord, through God, we do have these victories. We can win. We can sub subjugate and subdue any and all oppression coming our way. The victory is the Lord's, and since we are in Him, we do have that victory. There isn't something you're facing that the Lord's not able to take down. Now, again, it doesn't always mean that the victory is going to be easy. It doesn't always mean you're not going to suffer some defeats. Uh, even Israel, in their history of fighting, suffered some defeats. And you read about how David later in life, once he got older, he suffered a defeat where he almost lost his life. And they were like, okay, you're old. You're not going out to battle anymore. He was an old man. It was time to put the sword down. Spiritually, I don't think there's ever a time when we have to put the sword down because that, do, that depends on our spiritual health, not our physical health. So God, so despite the defeats that come your way, despite the enemies that sometimes seem to get a hit in, sometimes seem to get an entire victory over you, you might stumble and fall into sin. The battle is the Lord's. Victory is God's. And as a quick side note, this victory can absolutely be achieved physically for those of you who are policemen. Um, in the armed forces. God can absolutely give you physical victory in a physical battle just like he did in the Old Testament. That We're not exempt from that today. God hasn't stopped fighting in the physical today and certainly physical fights still need to be fought today and that doesn't just apply to the U.S. either. That applies overseas as well. If you're caught up in some physical altercation the Lord can certainly bring you through that in one piece. You don't have to be the buffest guy. You don't need to be some ninja master. If you've got God on your side, you can absolutely obtain victory. And again, that doesn't always guarantee that everything's going to be perfect, everything's going to be all right. Let's keep in mind that Israel's share had a, its fair share of defeats. Most of the time that was in regards to sin. Also, please keep in mind Hebrews chapter 11 that talks about some of God's servants particularly the Old Testament, based on the um, context of the chapter, a lot of them lost their lives serving God. So just because we are servants of God doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to live through whatever it is we're struggling with. Sometimes that sacrifice is needed. Sometimes death is actually the answer that brings about the victory that the Lord is looking for. Uh, just to give a brief example, if a Christian gets cancer and through that cancer gets to minister to some people that otherwise would never have heard his or her voice and those people get saved and that person dies and perhaps that death will seal that person's testimony in the hearts of those around him. You've brought people to the Lord, you've strengthened people in the Lord at the cost of your life. 
if spirits are saved from hell and damnation eternally through a physical death, which leads to eternal life for the believer in heaven, quite frankly, that's a fair trade. It's not fun. It's quite painful, especially for the, not just for those who are going through it, but for the families and the loved ones and the churches of those going through it. But those can be victories. They might look like defeats, but those can be victories. And sometimes we as Christians are called upon by the Lord to give our life. And sometimes the Lord, like Cain and Abel, allows the evil one what appears to be a victory over good. Doesn't mean the Lord's not there. God was right there when Cain killed Abel. Just like God's been there when one of my friends died in a car accident. I remember asking God, God, where were you? Like, this dude served you. Where were you? When he died in that car accident, God's answer to me, son, I was right there. It didn't catch God off guard. He wasn't blindsided. The victory is ours in Jesus Christ. Sometimes we do need to get a, redef a redefining, a retranslation of what victory actually means. And sometimes it's just a flat out, yeah, that person, if in a physical altercation, that person's going down. In a spiritual sense, you know, that, that selfish desire, that sinful temptation, that thing is going down. It's not going to have domain and dominion over me anymore. Remember that we can fight and win in the Lord. And sometimes even what looks to be a setback is the Lord's victory in disguise. Guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I love you, and God bless.